Hello guys, I welcome you to this video lecture on physics of electronics material. In the last lecture, we uh, discuss about effect of doping concentration and biasing on depletion region width. And we found that okay, as the doping concentration increases the depletion region width decreases so for high doping concentration the depletion region width will be small and vice versa also we discuss about what is going to happen when we have a forward bias and reverse bias condition in forward bias condition the depletion region width reduces in forward bias condition the depletion region width increases now in today's lecture we are going to discuss about some special types of diodes so this uh, basically we are going to discuss about LEDs LEDs the second special purpose diode we are going to discuss is known as variactor diode and the last we are going to discuss about Zener diode. This Zener diode is not in your syllabus, but I'm going to explain it because you are going to use this Zener diode for your practicals in second year as well as third year. So you need to know what is this Zener diode and how it works. So in this today's lecture, I'm going to divide this into two parts. All these LEDs into two parts. So first, I'm going to explain how they are constructed. And then I'm going to explain their working. So let's talk about LED first. So LED. LED means light emitting diode. So as the name suggests, these diodes emits light but they emit light only when they are forward biased so leds are always used in always used in forward bias condition So let's see the construction of this LED. So the construction of LED is very simple. You have a convex reflecting surface on which a n-type material is placed and above it there is a p-type material. So over here this is a p-type material, this is a n-type material and two contacts are taken out from this particular material and the whole assembly is encapsulated into some polymer material something like this so if you have seen the leds it will look something like this so this is my cathode terminal and this is my anode terminal so basically and the symbol for led is something like this symbol for diode and few arrows are shown suggesting that light is getting emitted from it so this is the construction of led and this is the construction and this is symbol for led now let's discuss about the working of this particular diode now you know that if i have PN junction. So this is a P type material and this is N type material and there are lots of hole over here on this side and there are lots of electrons on this particular side in N side and there is a depletion region over here. Now 
where does this electron reside if i draw a band diagram something like this so this is my conduction band this is my valence band where does the electron in n type reside the electron in n type reside in conduction band right so these electrons have a large energy so this is let's say n type materials band diagram and in p type material this is conduction band this is valence band and the holes are residing in valence band so as compared to this holes as compared to these holes the electron has larger amount of energy now when the electron now if i forward bias this particular thing what is going to happen when i forward bias this particular thing then the electrons are making transition from n type material they are crossing the junction from n type to p type material and when they cross these electrons are getting recombined with this particular hole so what is happening in terms of band diagram so in terms of band diagram what's going to happen i'm going to transfer these electrons from this conduction band to this conduction band and they are recombining together so the electrons are coming from conduction band to valence band and as the electron is making transition from conduction band to valence band since the energy of conduction band is larger and valence band is lower the electron's energy is reducing so where does that energy is going so this energy is given out in some form of given out so this energy is given out now there are two types of processes possible one is known as non radiative process basically the energy is dissipated in the form of heat and the second is radiative process so the energy is emitted in the form of light so these two things are possible now usually our normal diodes they are made up of silicon so these normal diodes is made up of silicon and the band gap of silicon is 1.1 electron volt so when the electron recombines from conduction band into valence band when the electron transfer from n type material to p type material and it recombine with a hole the energy that is given out will be equal to 1.1 electron volt equal to the band gap of a material right now if i calculate what will be the wavelength corresponding to this particular energy then let's suppose that this amount of energy is given out in the form of light so in the form of photon so the energy of photon is given by h nu which is equal to the band gap energy of the material and if i want to find it in terms of wavelength so that would be sc over lambda which is equal to eg so this will give me if i rearrange this equation wavelength will be equal to sc over eg now if i calculate the value of h into c and then i'm going to get wavelength in nanometer is equal to 1 to 40 divided by energy in electron volt so the wavelength emitted in nanometer will be equal to 1 to 40 divided by 1.1 so that would be how much 1127 nanometer and this particular wavelength correspond in infrared region so our normal eyes 
cannot see this particular radiation. Okay. Moreover, in case of silicon, silicon is indirect band gap material, and since it is an indirect band gap material, there is mostly a non radiation, non radiative process is taking place as compared to radiative process. So the recombination when take place over here, a non-radiative process is preferred as compared to radiative process. Okay, and that that is the two reasons why we do not use silicon as LEDs. The first reason being silicon is indirect band gap material. And most of the energy is dissipated in non radiative way. And the second reason is the small amount of radiative recombination so most over here I said that most of the energy so not all is non radiative recombinations some combination will be radiative combination and even though the small amount of radiative combination is taking place the radiation is in IR region so we cannot use silicon for this particular purpose. However, if I use, let's say, gallium phosphide or gallium arsenide or gallium arsenide phosphide material, these are the material, compound semiconductor materials. If I use these particular materials, that time the band gap of this material correspond to visible wavelength. So if I find out what will be the radiation coming from this particular material corresponding to this particular band gap, then it will be in visible region. So instead of silicon, people use gallium phosphide, gallium arsenide and gallium arsenide phosphide. The reason is very exactly opposite to why we are not using silicon. The first reason is that these are gallium phosphide, gallium arsenide, gallium arsenide phosphide. These materials are direct band gap material and they prefer radiative recombination. That's the first thing. And whatever the radiative recombination taking place, the wavelength is in visible region and you can see the light. Okay. So, over here, in the construction itself, this P type and N type material that we have shown over here, they are made up of gallium arsenide or gallium phosphide or gallium arsenide phosphide. Depending on what is the material, the color will vary, the LED color will vary. So basically, as you can see over here, you need to transfer an electron from N type material to P type material and then only there will be a recombination. That's why the LED works on a forward bias condition only. It cannot work in a reverse bias condition. So this is the working of LED. Now the second diode, special purpose diode that we are going to see is known as variator diode. So this variator coming from two names, variable capacitor. So basically you can use this particular diode as a variable capacitor. Now, 
the construction of this particular diet is very simple it is similar to your normal pn junction diet but with a slight difference that it is made up using low doping concentration why because i need a large depletion region now if the depletion region is large and if i connect it in a and this particular diet works in a reverse bias mode always now if i connect this in reverse bias condition what is going to happen the depletion region width will go on increasing and if i change this voltage there will be a large change in this depletion region width because the doping concentration is low okay so this is the construction so basically it is a simple diet with low doping concentration and it is connected in reverse bias condition now working now a normal capacitor what you have in a normal capacitor in a normal capacitor you have two conducting plates and in which you fill up a dielectric material right something similar is happening over here as you know that if i have a diode then on n side and p side there are free charge carriers so these are conductor this act as a conductor similar to conductor but the depletion region over here is chargeless so basically it act as a dielectric material so i can use this particular diode as a capacitor this p type and n type act as this plates and the depletion region act as a dielectric material the symbol for this diode is something like this so a normal symbol for diode and a capacitor Shown over here, right? And it is always connected in reverse bias condition. So now, if I reverse bias it, what is going to happen? The depletion region width will change, and not only the depletion region width will change, but the depletion region width will depend on. the biasing voltage so depletion region width will depend on biasing voltage and you know for capacitor capacitance is given by epsilon a by d where a is the cross sectional area and d is the separation between plates so basically this is d now if i go on increasing the reverse bias voltage what's going to happen the depletion region which is going to increase so the capacitance is going to increase so if i plot a graph on x axis i am having the capacitance and on y axis i have the reverse voltage then the capacitance will go on increasing as i go on increasing the reverse bias voltage so the graph will look something like this so this is where reactor diode and the last diode that we are going to discuss is zener diode now this zener diode is a special purpose diode and it is also operated in reverse bias condition 
so if you operate it in forward bias condition it will just act like a normal diode but its actual working or the functioning is in reverse bias condition so in a reverse uh, the special purpose diode what you have you have the construction is very simple you have this p type material and n type material please note i have shown a very small depletion region width so what does that suggest this zener diode is heavily doped so the p type and n type materials are heavily doped material okay now we are going to see the working of this particular thing in a forward diode forward bias condition it act as a normal diode so nothing new in that so whatever the working of now normal diode that will be the forward bias working for zener diode however in case of reverse bias there is a change now in case of normal diode what's happen when you apply a reverse bias voltage in a normal diode the reverse characteristics are something like this so this is voltage this is current so up to this the current remain very small and suddenly it increases why this particular increase in current take place this is because of a avalanche breakdown and why does this avalanche breakdown take place this avalanche breakdown take place because if you see a pn junction over here so this is p type material this is n type material and this is connected in reverse bias condition so the conduction will be because of the minority charge carriers so whatever the minority is that is hole in n type material is getting accelerated now this voltage is very very large and as this voltage is very very large this hole will be accelerated similarly the electrons from p type will be crossing junction and they will be accelerated now these accelerated charge carriers can eject can collide with atoms and they can eject other charge carriers from the material and as they are ejecting the charge carriers from the material a huge amount of current flows and that particular thing is known as avalanche breakdown right if the avalanche breakdown take place this is a reversible process and you lost the particular diode and this happens at very large voltage in case of zener diode since zener diode is heavily doped before avalanche breakdown take place at a very low voltage what is going to happen is that <coughs> since this is let's say this is my zener diode so the depletion region width is very very small so let's say this is the depletion region width so this is zener diode and this is your normal diode made up of the same material let's say silicon so this is normal diode now this is the width for depletion region let's say dz for zener diode and this is the width of depletion region for normal diode let's say dn now will uh, this uh, this particular zener diode let's say this zener diode and this normal diode they are made up of the same material will the barrier potential be same yes the barrier potential depend on the material so the barrier potential will be same let's say these are made up of let's say silicon so 
basically this is made up of silicon so the barrier potential will be 0.7 volt okay so what you have over here is that between this region only along this region you have a voltage of 0.7 volt in case of normal diode between these two regions you have a 0.7 volt and you know that the electric field is given by v by the width through which the electric field is uh, voltage is applied if i apply a voltage of v then the electric field generated because of this voltage will be equal to v divided by the width for which it is applied now look over here now dz is less than dn so what's going to happen to the electric field in zener diode and electric field in normal diode the electric field in zener diode will be much 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 larger right so if you understand this particular thing that the electric field generated in this particular internal electric field generated in this zener diode is much larger then what is going to happen when you apply a reverse bias condition so when you apply reverse bias condition a hole let's say a electron from p type material and hole from n type material so this electron will be accelerated by this high electric field over here and because this is getting accelerated at a high electric field it can eject some electrons but it, uh, since the doping concentration is very very large avalanche will not take place avalanche breakdown will not take place so what you are going to get as a reverse bias condition is that you are going to get something like this and this is known as zener breakdown and this happens at a low voltage so this is low voltage for example in case of normal diode in case of normal diode the reverse bias condition would be something like this so this is avalanche breakdown and this is high voltage so it will be around let's say 50 volt over here this zener breakdown can take place around 6 volt itself So this is Zener, working of Zener diode. Now, how we are going to use that for some application? Let's see, quickly let's see that particular thing. Zener diode is shown by this particular symbol. Or you can also show it something like this if you like, Z doesn't matter so this is a zener diode symbol for zener diode now this zener diode is connected always in a reverse bias condition now suppose i have a battery let's say this battery is providing 10 volt i'm going to connect my zener diode something like this And there is a resistance over here and let's say that this is variable power supply with maximum voltage going up to 10 volt now when the applied voltage is let's say this zener diode breakdown voltage is let's say 6 volt so zener voltage is 6 volt so this zener diode start conducting with a huge amount of reverse current when the voltage is equal to 6 volt now when let's say i applied one volt what's going to happen so this diode will not be in a reverse bias it will not conduct so basically a very small amount of current is flowing through this particular diode so look at look in this particular region right so very small amount of current is flowing through this region so all the current that is flowing will go in this direction and it will flow through this particular resistance now suppose i applied it 2 volt 
then again the same thing all the current will be flowing through this resistance now suppose what's going to happen if the voltage is let's say 6 volt when the voltage reaches 6 volt at 6 volt this diode this is 6 volt start conducting in the reverse direction so the maximum amount of current will be flowing through this particular direction and a small amount of current will be flowing through the resistance you are getting my point for 7 volt again a large amount of current is flowing through zener diode and small amount of current flowing is through this this particular resistance and look over here at this particular point no matter what the current is what is the voltage that you are going to get always 6 volt so no matter what the current is flowing through this particular diode if it is reverse bias the zener breakdown the voltage across this diode will be equal to 6 volt so if I have applied 100 volt here and this is 6 volt zener diode that time at the output across this resistance I am going to get 6 volt so this zener diode is used as voltage regulator right so basically okay right when the voltage input voltage is larger than the zener voltage it allows the current to flow through it and when the current starts flowing through it the voltage across the diode will be equal to the zener voltage and that zener voltage is fed to this particular resistance and at the output you are going to get the zener voltage only and if the voltage is less than 6 volt then there will be no current flowing through this zener diode and all the current will be flowing through this resistance and the voltage again uh, the voltage will be equal to i into r so that's what zener diode and how you are going to use this zener diode for some application now let's see one more thing which is not in your syllabus but you might want to know that particular thing so what is the application of this particular diode so this diode is basically can be used as rectifier there are many applications of diode but one of the major, uh, major application is rectifier uh, let me redraw this diagram this is a diode and I am going to look at the output voltage over here and I have applied a sine wave like this so what is going to happen at the output so when this positive going cycle is going so when this particular cycle is taking place this is positive so the voltage is increasing from 0 to some maximum value and then again reducing to 0 so this particular diode will be followed by a condition so what you will be getting you will be getting something like this what will happen when a negative cycle is applied so the voltage is reducing from 0 to negative values and then again coming to 0 so this is a negative voltage right so at the anode I have applied a negative voltage so this diode will be in a reverse bias condition and there will be no conduction no conduction if I look at the next cycle then again for the positive going cycle there will be current and for negative going cycle there will be no current for next cycle again for positive going cycle there will be current and then for negative going cycle there will be no current so this only allows current for positive cycles So basically it is rectifying, it is removing this particular negative cycles. So that's why it is known as rectifier. Right? But even though it is removing the negative cycle, this is still varying. It is not constant, this is not DC. Right? 
so in order to make it dc you need to apply some other circuit now one more thing now suppose i did something like this suppose this is v is equal to 3 volt and i connect this diode something like this so this is a forward bias condition and something like this or let's say key i have a ac cycle over here what will be the output over here across these two points let's say point a and point b so if i apply so input is something like this what will be the output think about it thank you for your time that conclude our unit number 3 from the next video lecture we will start with unit number 4 thank you for your time see you in the next video